This is the children's Sunday school lesson for July 4th in 2021. Jonathan and David. Um, memory verse. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one that he lay down his life for his friends. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. Jesus said this in John 15, 12, and 13, and it was um, explaining to the disciples that we should love each other that much, and that Jesus was showing them how much we should love each other by his laying down his life to save us from our sins. But we have an Old Testament example of the same thing, and that was the relationship between Jonathan and David. You will remember Jonathan as the son of Saul that went up the mountain and said, hey, God doesn't have to deliver just by, by the whole army. He could deliver just by you and me to these armor bearer. And they went up the hill, and God did a great victory through Jonathan. He had great confidence in God. And then last week we talked about David killing Goliath and he had great confidence in God and was very frustrated when Goliath was making fun of his God. So since um, after David killed Goliath, King Saul told David he had to come and live at his house. He wasn't supposed to go back to Bethlehem anymore. And he kept him there all the time to play the harp for him and to calm him down when the evil spirit tried to destroy him again and again and again because God had left him. This story comes from 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapters 18 to 20, if you want to look up in your Bible. So they were really good friends, Jonathan and David. They were living in the palace together, and they really loved being together. And since Jonathan was rich and David was poor, Jonathan gave him gifts that showed how much he loved him. He gave him his robe, his tunic, his sword, his bow, and his belt. And um, he said, I'm going to be your friend forever. And David said to Jonathan, I'm going to be your friend forever. If anything ever happens to one of us, the other one will take care of the kids. We are always going to be friends. We're always going to be close. It's nice to have a good friend like that. Um, after the next battle, when they were coming back in again, the lady started singing, Saul has killed his thousands and David is tens of thousands. And Saul thought, whoa, the people love David more than they love me. And he was filled with that green word, jealousy. So the next time when David was playing his harp, to try to settle King Saul down, King Saul took his spear and he threw it across the room trying to pin David to the wall. But David was pretty quick and he got away from him. A couple of days later, Saul did it again. Threw his spear at David, trying to kill David. And then some days Saul was kind to him. He said, you can marry my daughter, Michael. But other days, he was very mean to David. One day, he told all of the men, we have to kill David. If you see David, you kill David. And Jonathan said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You stay out here, David. Let me see what I can go do. And he went and talked to his dad. He said, Dad, why would you want to kill David? David has rescued the people. He has taken care of those Philistines again and again for you. He is your son-in-law. He lives here in the house with us. He is a man of God. Why do you want to kill him? And so Jonathan talked his daddy into stop fighting David. And it lasted for a little while. Then they saw through the spirit David again on another day. And David escaped. And so... This time he escaped and he went to Samuel, the prophet. And he was staying with Samuel. And Saul sent some men to try, to try to capture David. And when they got close to Samuel, they started worshiping and singing instead. <laughs> and so 
Saul sent some more guys to get David. When they got there, they started worshiping and singing again. He sent a third set of guys to get David. Started worshiping and singing again. Saul said, well, I'll take care of this myself. He went to see if he could get David to capture him and hurt him. And when he got close to Samuel, he started singing and worshiping too. He could not touch David because God was protecting David. So eventually Saul was back home again and David came to see Jonathan. And he said, Jonathan, I'm, I'm hiding out here. Come out here and talk to me. So Jonathan came out and talked to him and he said, one of these days your dad's going to really kill me. He says, he's been trying to get me for years. He's, it's going to happen. He said, I think I have a plan. He said, I'm going to hide out here in this field. And you go to supper. It's a special new moon supper. And he'll expect me to be there. And you just find out if he's still hating me and trying to kill me or not. And Jonathan said, I'll figure it out. He said, I'll tell you what, you stay in the field and hide. And if it's safe for you to come home, I'll say to a little boy, hey, the arrows are on this side of you when we go out to shoot arrows. But if it's not safe, I'll say, the arrows are beyond you. You just listen for my voice and see what I say. If I say the arrows are beyond you, that means you better run away, David. But if I say the arrows are on this side of you, that you went past them, then you'll know that it's safe for you to come back home again. So Jonathan went to the, to the meal, and the first night of the meal, um, Saul never said anything. The second night of the meal, Saul said to Jonathan, Jonathan, where is your good friend David tonight? And he says, oh, Dad, he wanted to go up to Bethlehem to be with his family. They were at a big family supper tonight. And King Saul went crazy. He's screaming and screaming at his son. He said, don't you know that as long as David lives, you are never going to be the king? You are supposed to hate him. John says, I love him. You, you will never be the king as long as David is alive. Dad, I love him. He has never done anything wrong to hurt you. And Saul picked up his spear and tried to kill his own son with his spear. And Jonathan got out of there. He took a young boy with him and he went down to the field. And he took his bow and arrows. He took three arrows with him and he shot the arrows and then he waited till the boy went out to get them. And he said to the boy, the arrows are beyond you. Go further out. That was his signal to David that it was not safe to come back to the palace. So then he told the boy, take the arrows and my bow and go back to the palace. Go ahead. I'll, I'll catch up with you. And then David came and he bowed down to Jonathan three times. And he said, I'm sad, but it's not safe for me to come home, is it? Jonathan said, nope, my dad intends to kill you. It's really sad. He said, he's not thinking very well, David. He should know that you are his friend and that you are my friend. Let's make a promise to each other. So they made a promise that if anything happened to David, he would take care of Jonathan's family. If anything happened to Jonathan, he'd take care of David's family and that they would be friends forever ever because they loved each other as much as they loved each themselves and then they hugged and they kissed and they said goodbye and David went into hiding and he's in hiding for years after that and Jonathan went back to the palace but his dad didn't try to kill Jonathan let's pray about it dear father God when you find a good friend that good friend has to be somebody that loves Jesus as much as you love Jesus. That's the reason those two good friends were good friends with each other, because they both loved you. Thank you, O Lord, for their, their example of how friends love friends and your example of how you died on the cross for us. In Jesus' name, amen.